Hi there. In this video, I'll be walking you through how to integrate MailChimp into a Next.js or React project using serverless function view. In this video, I'll walk you through how you can set up MailChimp, get your MailChimp API keys, and how you can add a new member to your subscribers list or MailChimp. Let's get into it. So I've gone ahead to actually install Next.js, and this is a very bare Next.js project. And I've gone ahead to build some parts of the UI which you can see here, just a form and say subscribe to our newsletter. And with this form, we are going to collect the user's email and we are going to add them to our MailChimp audience list. So the first thing we want to do is go into the MailChimp API documentation. And you can see that the package that we need to install is at MailChimp underscore MailChimp marketing. And this is a Node.js package. Now, one of the things you have to take note of is, the, uh, is that you cannot make API requests directly to the MailChimp server. You need to pass it through some server, which is why we are using serverless function. And the way serverless functions work in Next.js is you go to the pages folder. You see this folder called API, and you see hello.js. So this is a sample uh, serverless function. And if you come into your application, and I do slash API slash um, hello, you can see that this is going to return some response. It just returns name is John Doe. We're going to make that better. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this to newsletter, or you could call it join newsletter or anything that you want, right? Then up next, I'm going to install the package, the MailChimp package rather. Um, so npm install this guy. And that, of course, will take some sec. Package is done installing. If you check things over here, you see that we have some config that you need to set, which is the API key, the server, uh, the server prefix, and so on and so forth. So let's first work on the API key. For the API key, come over to your dashboard, then click on your profile picture, then click on profile. It's going to load up. Then you can come over to extra and click on API keys. And of course, uh, I have a bunch of API keys here. All I have to do is just create a new key. You can call it whatever you like and generate key. Now, once your key is generated, make sure that you copy it to the clipboard because you are never going to be able to see this key again and you will not be able to copy it. So I'll click on done. And I'm going to come back into my code base. I have an EMV over here that I'm calling MailChimp API key. Save that up. Cool. Um, so yeah, that's basically all we need on that front. So if I come over here to newsletter, I can then basically copy and paste the code that we have over here just to set things up. So I'm going to come over here and say this guy equals. So I'm going to rename this to MailChimp. I just prefer to do that. Now, another confusing thing is even though it says client, please note that this has to run on a server. It's essentially a Node.js environment, right? Then API key, of course now, we have MailChimp API key. I'm gonna come over here and say process.env. Let me just copy that and paste it. Then the next thing is your server prefix. To get your server prefix, simply come to your dashboard and look at the subdomain name before admin.mailchimp. So in this case, US16. So I'm just going to copy that, and I'm going to put that in here. You can put it in an EMV, but I just prefer to add code this, right? Uh, there's really no security risk attached to it, per se, and it's obviously even open over here, right? So yeah, so that's the first thing. Uh, so you now have your MailChimp set up, but it doesn't do anything yet. So let's do some work on the front end. So I'm going to come to the dashboard, and I'm just going to... Um, create a state to collect the email, uh, set email equals use state, set that to nothing, and on change, we want to, of course, update this value, just set email to e.target.value, right? So we have that now. now when the user submits, uh, we want to add little minimal validation. We are just going to say required. We are not doing 
anything over the top because the focus is on the serverless function itself, right? So I'm going to come over here now and create an undo submit function, which is basically going to send the data to our backend. Yeah. And I'm going to attach that to the form on submit equals undo submit. And of course, uh, you need to prevent the defaults so that the page doesn't refresh. Cool. Now, we are getting there. So the first thing you want to do, of course, uh, we want to make an API request, right? So I'm going to do try, right? Then I'm going to say catch this guy in case there's any error. And I'm just going to say console.error. Something terribly went wrong. Right. So um, then the next thing we want to do is make an API request. And to make an API request, all you have to do is just fetch. Then the endpoint would be slash API, then the name of the file that you name, the name of the file under the API folder. So for example, newsletter.js means that the API endpoint is newsletter. And in fact, if I just come over here and just say dot then res equals, um, res equals, uh, permit me, res.json, then dot data, uh, dot then, data equals console dot log data. Come over here, then I come to the application here, clear all of these guys out, and I say test at domain.com. Let's see what that gives us. You see, we have some data here, and it says name is John Doe, which exactly is what this guy returns. Now, we know that when you want to send something to a server or you want to save something on a server, you have to carry out a post request. So we want to make some checks inside of the serverless function so that not just anybody is able to have access to it, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and say if rec which is basically the request that is coming in, right? This is the request, this is the response, right? Um, I'm gonna say if the request dot method equals posts, right? Um, then send the response of 200 with a JSON of uh, John Doe, right? Else, which is any other request, just uh, rest dot send. I'm just gonna send this emoji, right, or sad emoji, save it up, and if I click on this now, um, let me see, request.method, yeah, rest.send, and let's see what this gives us. So refresh, I want to be sure that I'm refreshing that. Oh, it should be equal equals, yeah, <laughs> very rookie mistake. And you can see now, it says that on court promise, unexpected token, this guy is not valid. And if I come over here, slash API slash newsletter. Let's see what it sends. It gives us that emoji, good. So we are one step close. The next thing we wanna do is, of course, this right now is a get request. We want to change that. So I'm going to come over here. I'm passing uh, an object and change the method of this guy to be a post request, right? And of course, you want to pass some data. So I'm going to do body and json.stringify, I'm going to say email, uh, then uh, email, right? I can remove this guy because this is ES6 and it should automatically pick that guy up, right? And we are good to go. If I come back to the newsletter uh, serverless function, the next thing I can do is I can come over here and say uh, requests body equals rec.body, right? then uh, rec.body, then I can say const um, requests body json equals uh, json.parse. Since you are sending a string, you need to convert that string to uh, JavaScript object notation, right? So I'm just gonna say request.body. Now you can do some validation here and say, for example, if, um, if there is no email uh, if there is no, okay, yeah, so 
before we go do that, let's just log the request body JSON, right? Request body JSON. Then let's save this guy up. Save it. Now, it still returns John Doe over here, but if you come over to your terminal, you can see that it says that request body.json email is nothing. Of course, because I didn't carry out any action here, let's switch that up. And you see now, this guy is now test at domain.com. Very good. So you can carry out some validation here and say, uh, so for example, if you are expecting email over here and uh, request body.json, right, and say, um, say, uh, request body.json, right, you can set the default value of this guy to be nothing. And you can say, oh, if there is no email, if there is no email, just res.status um, 404, right, and say json, and say um, error. Error, email field not found right uh, then else for now we are just going to return the email back to the front end I'm just gonna come over here and say um, email so let's try this out so I'm going to clear this guy out save it up and try to subscribe of course it will not allow me so let me lift the validation uh, up for now then I'm gonna come over here and say uh, subscribe and it says 404 not found. Can you see this? It says 404 not found, right? That's the response that we get back. And you can see that the data says error, email field not found. So let me bring back the validation and enter a valid email. I'm gonna do test at domain.com, then subscribe and it returns the data. And we are closed. So the next thing we wanna do is come back to the MailChimp API documentation. And let's look for how to add someone to a list. It says um, client.list, which is mailchimp.place.add list member, the list ID, then the email address, and whatever status it is that you want. So the next thing we're gonna do is, how do you get the list ID? So in order to get the list ID, simply come over to the audience dashboard, right? Um, click on view contact. Click on view contact. Then come over to settings, uh, audience name and defaults. And you can see your audience ID over here. So in my case, this is my audience ID. So of course, I'm gonna come back to the newsletter.json, right? And of course, the logic continues here. I'm gonna do uh, mailchimp.lists.addListMember. Then I'm gonna pass the audience ID Right, and I'm just gonna do. Um, I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna do. So let's come back over here. Then the email address and the status. So I'm gonna do email address. Right, that of course will be email. Right, then the status. Right. So you set the status to pending if you want the user to still receive an email for them to confirm their subscription. Right. But if someone is agreeing to subscribe to your newsletter, you most likely want their status to be subscribed, right? And of course, this returns a promise, so you definitely want to um, await that. And of course, if you are awaiting that, you need to make this function async, right? Good. And yeah, so you have the email address, you have the status, what else do you need? And that's pretty much it. You can pass other parameters, like let's say, for example, tags. If you have like a tag that you want the users to be subscribed to or to be categorized in, right? Um, save this up, right? Then um, it says, okay, yeah, so let me just do a const uh, response equals this guy. Let's just await the response. Uh, let's just console dot log the response like they did over there. Save it up and let's come back here and let's do test at domain.com. Uh, this doesn't return, okay, yeah. So it's returned this object, so that means that it did try to subscribe to the newsletter. So I'm gonna inspect something. It says bad requests. Um, so it says 400 bad requests, uh, yeah. 
So I think I know the reason why that is. I'm just going to use a unique email. I'm going to use a unique email. So the reason is I most likely have test at domain.com already because I've done a lot of testing with this particular uh, MailChimp account. So I'm just going to say uh, super unique uh, super unique email at domain at let me just do at gmail.com just in case it's doing some flagging save it up and now we have the data super unique email and you can see that unlike before the request was actually successful good so it says response this guy is successful say for example you have a very large application where you are collecting emails at different touch points. That's probably a bad thing in itself. But let's say you had a wait list and you now have like a newsletter section on your website, right? You want users to still be able to like pass their email such that you're able to do things like probably update the tags and so on and so forth. In that case, you do not want an error to throw if you are adding, if the user enters their email, you just want to take it as a success state so what you can do instead is instead of using the add list member you can just use the set list member however there is a caveat for using the uh, set list member you have to create a hash for the user and the hash is basically um, a hash of their email so i'm going to show you how it's going to work so for that i'm going to install md5 i'm just going to do npm install md5 right and I'm, so then I can come over here and just say const md5 equals md5 uh, require md5, right? Then I can come over here and just say uh, const subscriber ash, subscriber ash equals md5 into bracket uh, email, right? Of course, we want that to be to happen when this is successful, right? Then we are going to pass this subscriber hash over here, right? And the next thing we want to do is, instead of status, we want to do status if new is subscribed. Now, let's try that out. So if I come over here and I click on subscribe, you can see that it still returns the data that I want for me. Of course, you can then go ahead to like modify this. So instead of email, you can have something like status. Okay, then you can do um, you can do something like uh, success, right? Equals uh, successful, right? This is bare bones, right? Then I'm going to come over here. Dot data, right? Then I can come over here and just say a lot and say uh, you were successfully, successfully subscribed, right? And save this guy up. And of course, you can catch errors and all of that, right? Then click on subscribe, and it says you were successfully subscribed. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found some value in this video, please do drop a comment in the comment section and like so that the algorithm can suggest this video to more people. Cheers and don't forget to build like a boss.